back yet? It seems like we just have an overflow from Friday night. I heard the men's thing was crazy, the women's thing. Say so we have an overflow of the Holy Spirit all weekend right now. Nine o'clock, the Spirit of God just moved. And the Spirit of God is still moving right now. The Bible says his house shall be called the house of prayer. I want us for the next maybe 20 or 30 seconds. It's not just praying for what you need. Just worship God. Thank him as if it's already done. So you need a miracle. Say, thank you, Jesus, for my miracle. Thank you, Jesus, for healing the, this cancer in my body. I Thank you, Jesus, for healing my marriage. Thank you, Jesus, for touching my husband. Thank you, Jesus, for touching my children. Thank you, Jesus, for touching my finances. Can you just thank God for whatever you're going, just thank him right now. Thanksgiving is a form of worship. He inhabits the praises of his people. So sometimes it's not just praying, but they just worship in him and watch it just be done. Press in for the next 10 seconds. Press in. Thank the Lord. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. How many just feel the presence of God in this place? Give the worship team a wonderful round of applause. I'll say it again. We need an all-night worship night right now pretty soon. How many enjoying the worship of God? You guys, as you're standing, everybody stand, remain standing. We're going to read the scripture. If you have your Bibles, go to Joel chapter 2. As you're standing, go to Joel chapter 2. For the ones that haven't met, my name is Pastor Robert. I'm the associate pastor here. Pastor Marco is my, my brother. He's a senior pastor. Can you give a big roar for Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa? The greatest pastors in the world. They're in Arizona right now. They're at, um, I always forget the name of the church. What is it? They're at Fresh Start Conference this week. Pastor Marco called me last night. He goes, Rob, it's getting crazy over here in Arizona. He goes, yesterday we worshiped for an hour and a half before the teaching. He said, the coolest thing, he said, that was amazing. The coolest thing was, guess who led it? I said, who? He said, the children led it. I said, what? The little kids, I think they're from um, 8 to 12 or something like that, they prayed before service. Now, they had services all week long, and the kids opened up the, their, their sessions with prayer. Little kids speaking in tongues with interpretation of tongues with prof prophetic words. The kids were given prophetic words to the adults. And the kids led the charge on some of these services. Parents, your kid is six years old. He can speak in tongues. Jesus at 12, he was all business, man, at 12. He was hanging out with the scribes and hanging out. I, 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 I'm diving in. I see some of the parents here. You brought your kids. Give all the parents a round of applause who's bringing their kids here and their teenagers. So, so this is what we're going to do today. I wish I had three hours here, but we don't today. I wish we did. Okay. Well, we can't. We got a 1 o'clock Spanish going on a little bit. We got 1 o'clock Spanish. But this is what we're going to do. My job here today is to activate the Holy Spirit that's inside of you. That's all my assignment here today is to activate what's already inside of you. Soon as you receive Jesus as Lord, the Holy Ghost is inside of you. But now him operating, it's a whole different story. I love what I've seen this last few weeks, that video that's going viral. I love it. That lady on Family Feud. How many have not seen that? Okay, I'll go on YouTube later. I'll give you, I'll give you rights. She's live on Family Feud. She's getting ready for the last, what is that challenge thing at the very end? She goes, Steve Harvey, wait. And she goes, as, she goes into the song, Holy Spirit, activate, activate. Millions of viewers just got introduced to the Holy Ghost. 
Steve Harvey started saying, activate. Holy. And Steve Harvey is singing along with her. Do you know God wants to show up like that every day of our lives? Joel chapter 2, 28. You guys got it? Then after doing all those things, I'll pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons, it's a prophetic word. If you're a parent, when I say this statement, just say amen. When I make this statement here, when I say this, just say shout amen. Here it goes. Here's a prophetic word over your kids. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. If your kid is next to you, lay hands on him. Say, you're going to prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. I don't want to say, but how many old folks we got in the house? We're going to see some dreams. Well, I'm not old. I'm only 44. What am I saying? I, that's, yeah. Your young men will see visions. How many young adults in the house right now? You're about to get visions from the Lord. I speak it over NLY. Our teenagers will get visions from the Lord. And your young men will see visions. In those days, I'll pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. I will cause the wonders, I will cause wonders in heavens and on earth. Holy, Holy Spirit, here we are. We've dedicated this hour and a half to you, Holy Spirit. We did our best, Holy Spirit, not to rush worship today. Because Holy Spirit, we want you to move and touch us. If we don't experience the power of God, this place just becomes a bunch of religion. It just becomes a regular church, God. This is not a regular church. Holy Spirit, you move how you want to move. If you want to give a prophetic word during the word, give a prophetic word out, just like you did, Holy Spirit. Our hearts and our ears, our minds, our families are open for a move of the Holy Ghost. If you want to move of the Holy Ghost, give Jesus a shout of praise in this place. Give somebody a high five. You're going down to your seats. You're in the right atmosphere today. I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. And for the title, if you're a note taker, if not, be a note taker right now because the Holy Spirit's speaking. The title is today, How to Walk in the Power of God. How many want to walk in the power of God? How many want to have somebody healed of cancer on aisle nine at Stater Brothers? I'm so happy the prisons just reopened. We're going back to the prisons. I'll be, I'll be in Calipatra with our team, if God willing. I'll be in Calipatra. I think it's the 19th and the 20th. We're going to beat up the devil at Calipatria. I can't wait to get back into those prisons. But there's th three groups of people, and I've shared this before. Write this down. There's three groups of people. There's a group of people who will see miracles. How many want to see miracles? You want to see people raised out of wheelchairs. You want to see marriages restored. They're on the verge of divorce and the divorce papers get canceled and their marriage gets restored. How many want to see miracles like that? Here's another group of people. People who are experience miracles themselves. They'll see miracles all around them. I want to see them. There's a group of people who's going to experience them themselves. You'll experience a miracle in your life. How many want to experience a miracle in your life, in your family? Here's a third group. And there will be people who will work miracles. I want all three. I want to see them. I want to experience them. And I want to work them. We are living in the last days. Jesus can come back any second. The prophecies that needed to be fulfilled for Jesus to come, they've already been fulfilled. 
meaning Jesus could come back at 1202. Look at your clock and now look at the person next to you and tell them, you, your, your, talk, your clock is ticking. I wonder if Jesus came back at 1102, how many people would be left behind? Jesus could come back at any second. But Joel reminds us that in the last days, before Jesus comes back, there will be a move of the Holy Ghost like never before. Starting with our children, started with our teenagers, then to the young adults, and to some of the older folks. How many want to see a move of God? Let me give you a few facts about the power of God. Write this down. Here's a few facts about the power of God. God's power is already in you. God's power is already in you. Acts 1.8, you will receive power. That word power means dunamis, means might, means strength. Supernatural manifestations of power. It means miracles and wonders. You'll receive power, meaning you'll receive strength. You'll receive supernatural manifestation of God's power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, San Bernardino, throughout Judea, Compton and San Francisco and Chicago. And in Samaria, Kenya, Uganda, the Middle East, Afghanistan, wherever you want to take us, God. And all the way to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit is already in you. The Holy Spirit, before we got here today, because we prayed. Worship team prayed. I prayed. How many prayed this morning, yesterday for the Holy Ghost just to move in, in our service? Soon as we began to pray, turn to Genesis chapter 1. Soon as we prayed last night, I prayed last night for the service, so I'll just put myself in this. As soon as I prayed for this service last night, the Holy Spirit was in this room. And he was hovering. He's been hovering since, well, I'm just using myself as an example. Since 9 o'clock last night, the Holy Spirit's been hovering in this room. Ready to move. Ready to save souls, ready to heal. Holy Spirit has been hovering in the sanctuary. How do I know that? Look at Genesis chapter 1. When the world, the earth was formless, nothing was created. Take a look at where the Holy Spirit was during creation. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Here comes the Holy Ghost in verse 2. Look at this. Powerful. The earth was formless and empty and dark. Where darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. So God's about to create heaven and earth. Where's the Holy Spirit? In this scripture. He was just waiting. Give me the green light, God. Give me the green light. <laughs> Let's activate planet Earth. Give me the green light. And God, in verse 3, then God said, let there be light. At that moment, the Holy Ghost was activated. And they began to create planet Earth. If I had to explain the Holy Spirit to you this way, it'd be this. If we were under a construction um, process right now, we're going to build this big building. Let me explain the Trinity real quick to you. You have God the Father, hey, really quick, the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. All three are one with different functions. You guys got that? It's like me. My name is Roberto Antonio Cuencas. Right? I have different functions. I'm a son of Carmen and Ray Cuencas. I'm a husband to Veronica Cuencas. And I'm also a father to Noah, Moriah, and Jazzy. 
Okay, you got the same guy, but I have different functions. Right now, I'm a pastor. I'm an evangelist. When I get home, I'm a father. Clean up your room. <laughs> Honey, I love you. Give me a kiss. I'm a husband. If I had to do it to a building process, it'd be this. God the Father is the architect. He's the architect. Comes up with the plans. Jesus is the foreman. He's the CEO of the whole project. Jesus is in charge. Someone would say that Jesus is in charge. Okay, Rob, who's the Holy Ghost in this building process? He's the hands and feet. He's the construction workers. He gets the hammer and builds this build. Different functions, same person. We understand Jesus quite well. We understand God the Father pretty good. But we've done a disservice to the Holy Spirit. I said something last week that watch out, don't open the door, um, Genesis, that sin is crouching at the door ready to stampede your house. You guys remember that last week? Holy Spirit is crouching. Give me a crack. Worship just three more minutes. Give me a crack and watch what I'll do. If you could get up at 5.30 and just give me five minutes. Just give me an open door. Give me a crack with your family. Give me an open door with your kids and watch me move. Holy Spirit is hovering. He's ready to move. The power is in you. Here's a second fact about the power of God. God has anointed you. Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the captives will be released. That the blind will see. And the oppressed will be set free. God's power is inside of you. God's power, the Holy Ghost, has anointed you. What does that word anoint mean in the scripture? It means this, to be chosen by divine election. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm the chosen one. Yeah. The word anoint means this, to anoint as God's successor. We're God's successors. The word anointed means this, fully equipped. Fully equipped to administer the supernatural power of God. You have been supernaturally equipped to move mountains. You have been equipped to cast out demons. You have been equipped to heal the sick and the blind. The power is inside of you. Well, write this down. Well, how do we activate it? Write this down. It's, it's again, a little off the note. Sorry, media team. Write this down. How do you walk into power? Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to minister his gifts through you. Ask the Holy Spirit to minister gifts through you. So here's the danger. If a church is not walking in the supernatural power, we will come up with replacements. We will have entertainment with no anointing. We'll have great theology with no revelation. And the, word, the Lord gave you this this morning. Write this down. With no power, we'll become superficial Christians. I got that word this morning. I think around 5 or 6 o'clock, all my times, they were just messed up all over the house this morning. We'll become superficial. What does superficial mean? Write this down. Superficial means this, existing only on the surface. There's no debt to you and I. Our kids, if they don't experience the power of God, 
they're going to become superficial. It'll be, this will become a religion, a religious service to them in the youth group if they're not seeing the power of God demonstrated through our lives. I like the second definition of, of, of superficial. Look at the second definition. I love this. Appearing to be true. See, if there's no power being manifested, we'll appear to be true. Look at this. Appearing to be true or real. Only until examined more closely. Appearing to be true or real, only until examined more closely. If God examined your life a little more closely, we have some people, maybe in this room, you've been coming to church, but you're still not born again. This could become or we could become, I've been there, there's sometimes during the week I could become, I'll just be honest, I could become superficial. Not spending time with God. Not reading my word, not witnessing, not telling my faith to people. There's times we could fall into this. And God is saying, I will come for a church who will worship me in spirit and in truth. Not superficial. They have depth to them. They are walking under the anointing of God. How many want the anointing of God? Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't be superficial. Appearing to be real. We could be in a service like this, right? And people not married. And you could leave this room today, you're not even married, and go have sex with your boyfriend after service today. Oh, we got to stay there for a second. Right? We could leave the service here and go get high. Right? You know what could be happening? Superficial. You're only experiencing God on the surface. And I'm guilty of that. I don't want to be superficial. I want to have the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. How many want the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit? So there's a few facts. Let me give you a few ways how we can walk in the power of God. We've already mentioned the Holy Spirit. Activate the Holy Spirit. Activate his gifts. Activate. You know what? The gifts. What are the gifts? Hold on. I got to teach you guys the gifts. Hold on for a second. How many would like to know the gifts you can walk in? Anybody would like to know the gifts you can walk in every day? Hold on. Let me, let me go to that. I don't know if you have it, media team. I think we shared it first. Yeah, we did. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Look at the gifts that you and I could operate in. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 7. A spiritual gift is given to each one of us so we can help each other. What's the purpose of the gifts? What's the purpose of the gifts? To help one another. Here are the gifts. There's nine of them. Write these down. How many are there? There's nine listed in this, in this chapter, nine. Here's the first one. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. First gift of the Holy Spirit is wisdom. What's the first gift of the Holy Spirit? What is it? There's number one. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. You could abbreviate or say another word of knowledge. He'll give you specific knowledge when you're talking to someone and you'll read their mail and you'll get, be able to read what they're going through by the gift of word of knowledge. How many want the word of knowledge? The gift of wisdom, the gift of word of knowledge. How many gifts is that so far? Is that two? Two. Here's number three. The same spirit gives great faith. Another gift of the spirit is great faith. How many want great faith? Not only for you, but to help someone else out, right? So how many gifts is that so far? Here's number four. To someone else, the Spirit gives the gift of healing. How many want the gift of healing? Here's another one. He gives one person the power to perform great miracles. 
How many gifts is that so far? Is that five or five? Is that five? All right. And another, the ability to prophesy. How many is that? Six. He gives someone else the ability to discern where their message is from the Lord. He gives you the gift of discernment. How many want to know if it's God or if it's the devil? How many has ever made a decision, you thought it was God, and oh my gosh, it was the devil? How many ever dated somebody like that? You thought they were God, all of a sudden they were Lucifer's son. He gives discernment. What number is that? Is that seven? Here's number eight and nine. He gives another one, the gift of the unknown languages. The gift of tongues. And another, he gives the ability to interpret what is being said. Nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit is hovering. He wants to activate some of these throughout our week. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes because we're activating. My job today is to activate what I'm going to do, I'm going to list one of the gifts of the Spirit. And if you want it, you're going to scream amen. What does amen mean? I agree with that, Pastor. Yes, I want it for my life. The word amen against, I'm in agreement. Yes, I want that for my life. Let's practice. The gift of healing. No, you got to shout that thing like you're, you're about to die. The gift of faith. The gift of miracles. The gift of tongues. The gift of interpretation of tongues. The gift of wisdom. The gift of words of knowledge. The gift of faith. The gift of great miracles. The gift of prophecy. The gift of tongues. The gift of miracles, the gift of prophecy, the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, the gift of prophecy, the gift of prophecy, the gift of healing, the gift of great miracles. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Glory be to God. It's about to get crazy up in this place. You guys up for a little challenge? How many could pray this right here, this scripture, for the next, let's get crazy here. It takes 21 days to create a habit, right? You guys want to get crazy with me? You sure? You want to walk in the anointing power of God? Let's get crazy. Here we go. Pastor Mark was going to come back on Wednesday. He's like, what just happened in this place? Good. How many? How many in this room, let's be honest, forget about who's next to you. How many never knew what all the nine gifts were? Raise your hand. Keep them up. I'm still memorizing them. Right? This is what our prayers turn into at times. Lord, bless my day today. That's a good prayer. It's okay. Pray that. Lord, touch my crazy husband today. <laughs> I can't do this no more. <laughs> touch my crazy wife. I can't do this. <laughs> touch my child. Touch my teenager. He's going crazy, Lord. <laughs> That's okay. Pray for your family. Pray for your kids. Pray for your husband. Here it goes. 21 day challenge. Pray this prayer every day. Say, Holy Spirit, activate these gifts today. Activate these gifts this week. The gift of miracles, the gift of healing, the gift of faith, the gift of interpretation of tongues, the gift of tongues. How many have never spoken in tongues before your heavenly language? You've never done that. I got to do it. Stand up. You're about to get baptized. Somebody stand up, stand up, stand up.
This is real stuff, right? You don't have to wait to get to freedom at the way. You can do it right now. So when you get to freedom at the way, you're about 20 steps ahead of the game. Okay? Again, the Holy Spirit is acting. How many has been yearning after that gift of speaking in tongues? You ask, you actually been praying for that, and you just haven't got it yet. You're about to get it. Lift your hands up, the people that want the gift. Really quick, too, it, has anybody, my mom had this gift so beautiful. I'd be, we'd be in Florida, the Church of God in Fort Meade, small, it was going to be a real big church, but... Um, Hold, put your hands down. Hold, hold on. I don't want you to get tired. And the pastor, Pastor Airwood, he's in heaven now. He was one of my mentors when I was in college in Florida. I spent a year and a half in college in Florida, and Pastor Airwood got to be my mentor. He's in heaven now. He was a senior pastor of Church of God, Fort Meade. And this scripture, the gifts, he would pray this over the church like almost every week. So the way the service is working in Fort Meade a lot of times, he would say, okay, praise team, shh, everybody, shh. People have the gift of tongues, go. And all of a sudden, somebody had to get real quiet. And someone would get up, and they would speak in tongues, quiet. You could hear a pin drop. And then my mom, she had the gift of interpretation of tongues. So when I heard the tongues go out, I said, here comes mama. <laughs> oh, oh, that's blue. Oh, I was like, it was like you were at the feet of Jesus in that service. So somebody would, boom, speak in tongues. And my mom, thus say the Lord. And she would interpret what was just said in the tongues. And sometimes the pastor couldn't preach because sometimes when that happened, it was nuts. People would just fall out without even doing nothing. It was crazy. I say that to say this because these gifts, they need to be reactivated almost right now. Even our church service, I talked to Pastor, Mar I talked to Pastor Marco last night. He said, I think sometimes we get too professional. Right? Me and you, we get too busy. We're running here and running there, and we didn't hang out with God at all this week. I, I've been there. Week gets nuts. It gets crazy. Things happen. Has anybody ever been told that you've had the gift of interpretation of tongues? Stand up. Way in the back. I see you, ma'am. Way in the back. God's going to, he, he, it's already on you. He's going to do it more so now. There it goes. There it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. There's the Spirit of God, sweetie, touching away in the back. She has one of the, and remember, remember, these gifts, somebody will work a little stronger in. There it goes. Yes. There it goes. Shh, 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 shh. There you go. Yes. Mike, Mike. Get a mic, get a mic. Yes. Yes. For the ones that didn't hear, the Holy Spirit said, I'm here. All you had to do was ask me. The Holy Spirit just said, all you have to do is ask me. 
Raise your hands if you want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Slip your hand up right now. I'm going to count to five. Why are you counting? It's just to get into the moment again. Okay? When I say the number five, some of you guys, you've, been, you've actually fasted for this. You heard about the gifts in our classes. You heard about the gifts growing up. You've read Acts chapter 2. You've read, said, man, how come I don't have it yet? And God is saying, because you're supposed to get it right now at 1224, uh, whatever date today is. November 6th, what's 7th, 7th? Today was your day. Lift your hands up. When I say the number five, something, some of you guys, not all, some, you're going to get hit, you're going to feel something, and you're just going to let it out of your mouth. You're just going to let it out. What am I saying? It's a heavenly language between you and God. He'll bring interpretation at times like this. But in your secret time, when you're in tongues, you guys, it's the only time the devil doesn't know what you're saying. I could pray like this, Jesus heal me. The devil knows English. We're going to have a Spanish service. He knows Spanish perfect. The devil doesn't have the tongues of heaven. So listen, it's the only moment when the devil doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what was just said. So when you're speaking in tongues at home, it's just download God, Holy Spirit, God, Holy Spirit, fire. It's shh, and you're getting messages from God that the devil's like, what's going on? And the demons are like, I don't know, they're speaking a heavenly language again. I don't know what they're saying. And it's, it's a strategic. You got it? I'm going to count to five. If you haven't spoken in tongues, you've been yearning for this. When I say five, just let it out. One, hallelujah, here it goes, two, three, soon as I say five, just start to speak, four, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, five, go, release the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There it goes, 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 there it goes. Is she getting baptized right now? There it goes, there it goes. Speak it, speak. The Holy Spirit's all over. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Just speak it. There it goes. There it goes, just speak it. There it goes, there it goes. Raise your hands. Just speak it. Go loud, go loud, go loud, go loud. There it goes, there it goes. There it goes. Go down, hold on, praise team, hold on. Go down a little bit. There it goes, let it out, let it out, let it out, let it out. Shut up, my Shut up, Shut up, There it goes. Yeah, something the back just got over there. There it goes. Now, you said, Pastor, I don't, I, don't, I don't hear myself doing it right now. It's okay. It's okay. You might be on your way home today, and all of a sudden you start speaking in tongues. You just receive it. There it goes. There it goes. Somebody got it right back there. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Another one got it. There you go. There you go. There you go. Isn't this beautiful? Isn't this beautiful? Yeah, yeah, there it goes. 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 The baptism. See, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I receive the gift of tongues. I thank you, Lord. It's a gift. It's not earned. It's a gift. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Holy Spirit, give Jesus a round of applause. 
Thank you in the back. You got a word? Holy Spirit said just ask. What do we have to do? We got to get ready for a Spanish service now pretty soon. Man. How many enjoy this presence? Isn't this great? We're going to end with salvation. It's going to be a fun Spanish service, too, if you want to hang out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in, me and Louis, me and Louis, we're going to go back and forth in Spanish and English. I don't speak Spanish that good. <laughs> Unless the Holy Ghost speaks Spanish through me, I don't know. It says other languages. It, who knows what might happen at 1 o'clock. I might just speak Spanish for an hour. <laughs> Espíritu Santo puede hacer todo. Espíritu Santo tiene fuerte. Espíritu Santo tiene amor. I don't even know what I just said. Yeah, I did. I know, I know a little Spanish. I know a little Spanish. You guys, can we stay in the spirit? Can you stand up? Nobody leave. Because it could cause a lot of distraction right now. Just hang out for one minute and we're done. Wow. How many received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Raise your hands. Your, your tongues. Raise your hands if you started, you started speaking in tongues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You got it today? Wow, you got it today? Isn't that awesome? Isn't that wonderful? You felt it, huh? Wow. This is an everyday thing now. How many are down for the 21-day challenge? Lord, use these gifts. Okay, here we go. I want to end with salvation. When a crowd this size, we got several people. In reality, if you died today, you're not going to heaven. When a crowd this size, there's several people that if you died today, you're not going to heaven. You could be going to a place or you're going to a place called hell. Pastor, what are you talking about? The only way to get to heaven is by receiving Jesus as your Savior. So have you done that? Have you asked forgiveness of your sins? It's not about a church. It's not about a religion. You can't go to heaven and say, hey, I went to the way. Come on. I want my mansion. I want, where's Jesus at? You can't. It's not about a church. It's about a relationship, okay? It's not, a, it's just you and Jesus. Here it goes. I just seen it this week. It, it, it tore my heart this week. The wide one of the wide receivers for the for the Raiders. Did you guys see that? One of the wide receivers for the Raiders got his new Corvette driving 156 miles an hour, double the amount of alcohol that should be in his system. Double. He's going 156 miles an hour. 22 years old. One of the wide receivers of the Raiders. He's enjoying that new car, living it up driving he runs into an SUV with a lady in the car and her dog she dies right there the video shows a football player on the side with his girlfriend he's bawling his brains out can't believe what just happened and to make it worse when he got out of his car he heard the lady screaming in that SUV dying he heard her screaming while she was being burned to death. He lost his whole career. It's all over. He'll be spending a lot of years in prison. DUI, involuntary manslaughter, all the charges. Pray for him. But now I'm looking at the girl who was in that SUV with her dog, just chilling. Enjoying life with her dog. I love going on trips with my dog, just chilling in the car. Did not know a guy would hit her from the back and she'd be dead. And she'd burn alive in her car. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed the next hour. We're not guaranteed the next 20 minutes. Give your life to Jesus today. So here it goes. I'm going to count to three. You want to be forgiven of your sins? If you want to make sure if you died today, you'd go straight to heaven. You want to get right with God. You've been backslidden. You want to come back to God. I'm going to count to three. You can say, that's me, Pastor. I want Jesus. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to make sure I'm right with God. I need to get right today. That's me. When I say three, all across this auditorium, online, raise your hands. One, two, three.
three. Raise your hands right now. Raise them, raise them, raise them. I want God. I need him. I need to get right with him. I see all those hands. See all those hands. I need to get right with him. I need God. I need forgiveness. I need heaven. I need Jesus. I see all those hands. All those who just raised your hands, I want you to come to the front. We're going to lead you in a prayer of salvation all the way from the back. Come, 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 come. This is your day. Come, come, come. Six, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53 people right now that I've counted so far. Maybe a couple more, 54, 55, maybe right here. Every head by every eyes close. Yes, 10 more seconds. It might be a few more that might come up. You're coming up, sweetie? You're coming up with it? Yeah, coming up. Yeah, come. We're waiting for you. We're waiting. Come on. This is your day. This is your day. Come, come, come. Come. Two more. Just one. Another one came up. Good job. Another one came up. You guys, Pastor Mark, he's back Wednesday. Don't miss it. He has a fire word this Wednesday night. Every head by every eyes closed. Online, repeat after us. Every head by every eyes closed. You didn't come up. You're saying, what am I doing? What am I doing in my seat? How come I didn't go down? What am I doing? You're asking those questions right now. It's okay. Say the prayer right there at your chair. You'll get saved right there, okay? Here it goes. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I repent of all my sins. Jesus, I ask forgiveness of all the wrong that I've done. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross over 2,000 years ago. But on the third day, you rose again to give me eternal life. Today I place my faith in you. Holy Spirit, fill me. Set me free from all my bad habits, all my addictions. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Everybody in the front, hang out for two minutes. We want to exchange some info. 21-day challenge. Ask God to activate the gifts of the Spirit this week. Pastor Marco is back on Wednesday. You don't want to miss it. Love you guys. Spanish service we have today at 1 o'clock.